Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Haste and this is a quick guide for the starter zone jumping puzzles in Guild Wars 2. You may have noticed by now we're running towards an area. We're currently in the Metrica province, the Azura starter zone, and the jumping puzzle here is called Goom's Lab, which you may have noticed if you ever bothered to look up into the air. It is arguably one of the tougher ones, certainly when it comes to straight up jumping, and I would definitely recommend going with two players or more for there are some mobs that might give you trouble if you're just on your own, and you likely can't defeat the boss at the end solo. As you can see, the entrance is hidden in the mountainside by some shrubberies and can be pretty easily reached through either the morass or the cider at tomb waypoints. In here you'll have some simple jumping ahead of you, but don't get comfy because this is just the warm-up. Once you eventually make your way across, you'll see an Azura portal happily floating in the air and a golem assistant right next to it. This assistant will be your best friend if you ever fill one of the parts, and you likely will, as he'll teleport you to different sections so you don't have to redo those you've already passed. For that matter, there's four sections in here. First, once you go through the portal, or talk to the assistant, you'll get in Windy Station, which not surprisingly is about wind. And you may have noticed by now we're pretty high up in the air. Luckily, ArenaNet wasn't that cruel to kill you, so if you fall you'll be teleported straight in front of the portal we just got through. It's pretty basic platforming for the first part, but don't be tempted to continue towards the portal. The portals will only work when you're attuned, a buff you need to get in every zone except the last. So halfway through you'll notice a rock formation going down. Make your way past that and eventually you'll run into an attunement device which, well, attunes you. Go through the portal and continue the jumping. As this is Windy Station there's certain gusts of wind you'll have to make your way past. The first ones are pretty easy, there's a lot of space in between the two so just wait for the first one to disappear, take a step, wait for the second one to disappear and continue walking. You might get pushed back by the final gust of wind at the end, but this isn't a huge deal, as it only knocks you backwards onto the ledge. The second one is a bit tougher. You'll notice there's a pattern with three gusts of wind. Two smaller ones in front and a huge wave at the end. What you'll want to do is wait for the second one to disappear, then when the first one kicks in jump over it, and as soon as you'll land the third gust will stop, and you can quickly run to the other end. Then it's some basic platforming and you're at the next Azura gate that leads to Stormy Station. Stormy Station is filled with lovely lightning strikes that may look threatening, but really aren't a big deal. They slow you down because they put you in combat and do some damage, but if you can carefully jump from rock to rock, there's no reason for you to fail or fear the shocks as you can easily survive and heal the bits of damage it does with your basic heal ability. You can actually avoid them if you prefer to do so, but there's no need, essentially. When you get to the tree, go down first so you can get attuned. And have I mentioned there's veterans yet? There's some basic veteran enemies which you might be able to take down on your own, but go faster with the team member. Then get the attunement, go through the portal and continue the jumping. There's one sneaky gust of wind you'll have to watch out for, but then just jump past it and continue ahead. Third is Chili Station, which has a tendency of giving you the chill debuff, significantly reducing your movement speed and making it almost impossible to jump to the next part. There seems to be about 5 seconds before it does the AoE slow again, so make sure to stop at least on one of the rocks for you'll have trouble making it past with the debuff on. Once you're past there's one gust of wind hidden in the wall so wait for that and then continue jumping. There might be some elementals in the way, but you can easily take these out for yourself. Then jump towards the third bit and pretty much turn around completely for you first need to get the attunement, which is the other way. Again there's a veteran in the way, take him out, grab the attunement, go through the gate and jump to the final part. The final part, called Goom's Lab, has some basic jumping required, but mostly comes down to the boss fight, which I would definitely not do alone. Goom the Mad is a mesmer and has quite a bit of crowd control with him and does a good amount of damage in debuffs. So get some help, take him down and you'll get a nice event complete. The large chest reward is a few platforms away. The second jumping puzzle we'll take a look at is the one in Queensdale, the human starting zone, near the Tamin foothills in a location called the Demon Grub Pits, which is filled with grubs which are harmless by the way. In here you'll find Kitterin, a human NPC who you can persuade in trying the puzzle but serves no other purpose. You actually go a bit back for this one, in general this jumping puzzle is really easy and probably is meant as an introductory puzzle, so of course I show the tougher Azura one first. But this one is fairly simple with big platforms to jump onto and not much challenge going on, except some veteran monsters, some ugly slimes near the end. 
Thirdly, the char starting zone jumping puzzle is in the plains of Ashford and can be easily accessed from the Loreclaw Expanse waypoint where you need to go underwater to access it. The platforming in this one isn't all that tough but it has some nasty traps you need to be careful of. First make your way up into the ruins, be careful of the falling rocks which aren't objects that hit you but do shake your screen in a dramatic fashion. You'll then see some red circles which you should not be standing in because they impale you with giant spikes that not only cripple you but will also kill you very quickly. You can easily get past it if you just stand in between the circles, wait for them to disappear and move on. Now there's a little opening here which so far has had a dough in it every time but serves no real purpose. So continue up the wooden steps and over the rocks where you'll be met by freaking fire breathing statues. By the way, if you don't hit the top platform the first time, you can jump up here through the right side. Now these fire statues are quite annoying and will kill you if you don't do it properly. You can try charging through them with dodges and abilities, but there's a way to do it without those so that won't get you hit. First go left and don't stand next to the wall for the fire will still hit you, then wait for the second one to stop breathing fire and quickly go past it and left again to dodge the next statues and heal if you need to. The last two statues aren't all that tough as you can stand in between them without taking damage, so wait for the first to stop, jump past it and wait for the last one to stop then continue on to the stairs. When you get to the final rock platform be careful because running onto the stairs will make rocks fall onto you and likely kill you. You just have to be quick and dodge roll up there, but be very careful of the little hole in the stairs because it will block you and slow you down. When you're up you'll notice the waterfall and if you position your camera correctly, you can clearly see where you need to jump to. After that there's a chest in a, um, curious position. Go ahead and open this, it is clearly not a trap and fight the veteran Skilk. You can do it on your own but together is of course easier. One thing to note here is that the chest is instance for every person, but you get the experience rewards regardless if you help out. So you can have others open the chest and redo the tiny boss event. You might be tempted to leave it here, but if you look carefully, there's some more platforms to go onto. This leads you to a pressure plate that opens a new door which contains all the riches. The Norn starting zone, Wayfarer Foothills, has after the human one the easiest puzzle of the lot. It's incredibly easy to spot and is located within the giant area called Shaman's Rookery. You'll notice NPCs called Sacred Ravens, which will knock you off if you get too close into the pit below, filled with enemy creatures. So avoid these if you can. They do fly away after a little while, so take that chance to get past them, as the hitboxes on them aren't very kind to say the least. In between those parts there's a shaman that wants to fight you, which you can take care of on your own, but don't stand with your back faced against a ledge, as they can knock you off. The other parts are rather similar, don't go near the sacred creatures and fight off the shamans until you reach the end, where you fight two leopard shamans that will open the gate after you defeat them. Lastly, the Savari one is by far the most unforgiving of the lot and actually contains two achievements involved, Morgan's Leap and Dark Reverie. Morgan's Leap is easily found in Caledon Forest at Morgan's Spiral. The jumping is tougher than most but has no other mechanics involved except a little shaking, so just be careful where you jump towards. The going gets tough when you're done with this one and you are on your way to the next part called Dark Reverie, filled with angry nightmare cord monsters and often a lot of corpses of fallen allies. Make your way across the path safely down onto the ground. Be careful not to aggro too many enemies at once because there's a lot of them down here, with quite a few veterans included. There will be the occasional mortar and bramble on some of the paths. The mortars have a long range attack, but go down pretty quickly. The brambles inflict poison and confusion, so be careful not to kill yourself when fighting those, but you should be able to take them all out on your own. I would recommend having a friend waiting for you at the bottom though, for if you fall you're most likely dead. Some of the pads might give you some trouble, but you can get past all of them without having to resort to speed buffs or abilities. When you get to the top there's a chest waiting for you, and you're done. Good luck in your jumping adventures.